Welcome to another episode of a model steam engine test plant. This is part 7. A new adjustable spanner is added to my collection and I show how to make a simple check valve adapter to allow a live steam injector to be used with the boiler. I recently sold a really good quality steam plant to one of my Patreon supporters. I seldom put things on the website anymore. If I want to sell anything, I just show it on Patreon. And as the videos are on Patreon for quite a while, the items are always sold before the videos go public. Plus, I generally give my patrons a discount when they buy anything from me. The other week, a customer called to pick up a steam plant I'd built, and he brought me this. It's a 3D printed adjustable spanner, and it works. I have thought about getting into CAD and 3D printing, but I do fear I would become utterly obsessed with it, so I'm not. Very clever though, the adjustable spanner even works, and it's okay. I'm going to hang it on the wall next to my one foot long barco spanner. Time to get on with the job. This is a large piece of what could be phosphor bronze, and I was thinking about using this to make the tops of the water tank and the condenser. But really I feel this would be a waste of a really good piece of metal. It's the largest diameter stock that I have in the workshop. I think this is a chucking piece that I got out of a scrap bin from an engineering company many years ago. What I'm going to do in this episode is make a check valve adapter because despite its size, the curious design of this boiler only has a boiler bush to take a single quarter by 40 check valve and also the taps on the top for the steam outlets are also a quarter by 40 threads per inch. A bit small overall, I think, for such a large boiler with a high steaming capacity. This, however, is just my opinion and I'm not really complaining about it. I will work with what I have to work with, with the exception of the original safety valve which made a horrible noise when it blew off. The boiler bush for the check valve is quite close to the large ceramic burner too. I was originally going to use a long piece of bar and fit two check valves to it, but as the boiler bush is only threaded quarter by 40, I didn't think this was a good idea. However, I do have another idea that should work fine. Here we go, over to the lathe. I'm making the adapter using a piece of leaded bronze and believe it or not, this is the only piece I had of the right size or just about the right size in the entire workshop. Note to self, buy some different sizes of phosphor bronze that are smaller than this. You will notice if you look carefully that for turning this part, I'm using a parting tool. This is not good practice, but in the case of this particular parting tool, which doesn't stick out very far from the tool holder, it works beautifully. In this highly magnified clip, you can see how good the surface finish is. I need to reduce the diameter at this point to 5 16 of an inch, so I'm setting an old micrometer that I found on the bench using a 5 16 of an inch twist drill. This is a metric micrometer, and I normally use an imperial one, but I don't know where it is. So this will have to do. Running the video at a high speed, I soon get through the job, frequently checking it with the micrometer. There are many different ways to do this job. Had I have had a long length of bar, I would not have done it the way I'm about to show. I turned down one side to about half an inch, then I turned the part around in the chuck and went in from the other end to also turn the rest of it to half an inch. Doing it this way will not be the most accurate way of doing it, but I will turn the part to make it accurate in the very last part of the operation. As you can see, I'm using the parting tool going in both directions. It tends to cut better going from right to left, but it also works this way. This is a small high-speed steel parting tool, and I really don't think you could do this with a carbide-tipped parting tool, as the side pressure would dislodge the parting tool's tip. This is where I reduce the diameter of one end to 5 16 of an inch, and here I'm getting very close. When I finally hit the magic number, I used an ordinary die holder to cut the thread. I used a piece of bar in the tailstock chuck to keep the die square to the work, but I didn't show that because from this angle you wouldn't see anything. This is an accurate 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread. It was a good fit and I verified this by screwing a 5 16 by 32 threads nut on the end. This next part is not recommended. I'm just showing different ways of doing the job. I'm holding the part in the chuck by the flats of the union nut that are screwed onto the thread. 
And now I'm using another parting tool which is incredibly thin and surprisingly, once again, this small parting tool cuts the lead of bronze perfectly. In no time at all, one end of this piece of bar was reduced to quarter of an inch diameter. Almost there now, I just need to remove a tiny bit to make this end quarter of an inch. This is the final cut, which coincidentally is also the name of my video editing software. To thread this end, I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch die, but it's a tailstock die holder this time, which is more accurate. I also have one of these tailstock die holders fitted with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die, but that's down in my other workshop. I came across a problem when I tried to wind off the die. It screwed off the nut on the other end, so I changed the position to hold the work by the main body, and then the die screwed off easily. Now comes the, well, interesting part. I'm going to true up the barrel of this fitting. It now looks like this, and here's a shot of it fitted into the boiler bush. The next part of the job is to make a mark using a felt tip pen on the body of the adapter. This could confuse some viewers. I'm making the mark in advance of where it should really be. You'll see why later on in the video. And this is where I'm going to drill it, tapping size for quarter by 40. First of all, with a center drill, followed by a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill, and finally by the tap, which is quarter by 40 threads per inch. You may notice that I forgot to drill a hole all the way through the fitting. I do things like this now and again. But I soon put that right, and here is the finished adapter sat on the baseboard along with the check valve. Before I screw the check valve into the adapter, I'm going to use some Loctite 542 sealant as usual to make sure that nothing leaks. I had to slacken off the banjo union and move the siphon out of the way so I could fit the adapter successfully. The final part of the job was to apply some Loctite 542 to the main thread that goes into the boiler bush and fit a couple of shim washers. It's quite difficult fitting this because I can't really get a spanner in place, so what I did was tapped it into position with a piece of brass. And by tapping it into position, I mean tapping it very gently. In this clip, I'm temporarily fitting a union nut to make sure that the thread of the check valve doesn't get damaged. A pipe will go from the PM Research hand pump, which I have in my hand, and here I've fitted some double unions so I can use the English standard 51632. And here is the pump. I quite like these, they're very workmanlike, very solid and easy to use, and they don't give any problems. They just pump the water into the boiler, which is all you could ever ask for. I may fit a second check valve to the outlet of this pump, because normally you don't just rely on the ball at the top of the pump to stop the water from leaking back out of the boiler. I'll show more about this later on in the series. It's very important to always take pipe runs into consideration. You don't want pipes running everywhere. You can see in this clip that the outlet of the hand pump is very close to the inlet of the adapter, so the piping will be neat. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.